My name is Kerry Ocon. I uh, work with my dad and my brother at Aardvark Letterpress, which is a 43-year-old printing business. We got a call one day from a guy named David Rawlings, and he asked if we did big runs. Typically, the type of printing we do, we do smaller runs. He mentioned uh, a really big project to print, like 100,000 CD covers. When the artist John Baisley was uh, doing the line drawing, he was initially going to do a watercolor stage and color it in, and when we reached this stage and saw his ink drawing, I think we were all very happy with it. So what happened was we just kept refining, refining, refining until we had an idea and an image. I sent them the finished piece, and David calls me up. They were really excited about the black and white that I just sent them. So I'm going, okay, you know, now I got to start the next the next part of my process. I'd been working, you know, 14 hours a day on the on the cover for so long, and I just wanted to say something to sort of defer having to paint for another day or two. But I was like, oh well, you know, there's all there's all these cool printing processes that we could use. There's Screen printing, which is probably not appropriate for a CD cover. There's offset printing, which is it's really, you know can look really nice. And then there's there's litter press, which I've which I've never done before. Their machines can't deal with paper this thick, so they're gonna have to stuff all the jewel boxes by hand. We've sort of debunked everything mechanized. I think these backs, I can't remember if they're getting printed in Tennessee or in North Carolina. Then we had help from another graphic designer out in Brooklyn, and our artist is from Savannah, but he's up in Philadelphia right now. And then everything's getting shipped to North Carolina and put together there. It's a really soft, thick, spongy paper, so when you hit it with the metal plate that we'll be using, It'll, it leaves a really deep impression into the paper. Something that you can't produce digitally. Uh, you can't do it on a computer. You have to actually do it the old-fashioned way. These are the plates we're going to be using to print. And Oh, wow, they look great. This is the front. You can kind of see the image. And it's, it's metal mounted, which allows us to, to give it a really nice hit and get a deep impression and a real consistent tone. And then the back, which isn't gonna be hit as hard and sort of some different issues going on because there's really small type in here. So these are wood mounted. We have deadlines that are, you know, sort of phases. I know we have an initial phase of 30,000. That's the first delivery we need to make and we have to have those ready by Monday. We're gonna be working a lot and staying late and probably I'm sure we're, we're normally working on Saturday, but I think this, we'll be here on Sunday as well. We'll just work all the way through and maybe double shifts and late at night, you know, whatever it takes. It appears as though the plate was made with the larger. Oh, interesting. There's a mistake. Yes. <laughs> Well, I don't I know. I mean, I feel like we already made our decision. We looked at it actually okay. struck, you know. Cool. All right, you know. call the office. That's okay. good. We got trauma now. Exactly. You, you always need some of that. It's a physical item. You can't, you can't proof it on a computer screen. There was an assumption that larger type was going to look better. And then we came down and did a test plate, and um, the larger type didn't look better. And so we went back to the smaller type, but it's something you can only learn actually looking at the thing. So then there was just some confusion, I guess, with which plate got made. But we'll straighten it out. It's called a windmill press because it has these, these two arms that act as, as a windmill they're sort of alternating once the machine's in motion and one arm is going to come over here to the side where you place the paper the blank paper and it'll lift it up bring it into the press the rollers will come down and ink the, those plates put the ink over it and then the machine will close and stamp make its impression then the other arm will come and pick up that piece of paper 
and drop it in the finished area. And the gray weeds sing, look away, way down along the Dixie line. I spent my childhood. We had originally thought that we would use a stock that was a little more warm toned, not quite so like pearly white. We basically bought everything they had in the warehouse. This is the only color we could get enough of. And so um, we dumped one of them in coffee. Well, when we we're talking about wanting it to have some age, so I just grabbed some coffee and some water and did it. This is just a test pressing from a test plate from the other day. And here's the test pressing dunked in coffee. This one at the last minute when I was pulling it out of the coffee bath, I got a drip over here by Dave's match hand and the flame. It's not perfect without the anomalies. Is this anything during the recording process? Absolutely. They are unbelievably adept at taking an idea that sounds ludicrous, cost prohibitive, time consuming, just you know, any any number of things. They are absolutely like second to none at seeing that through. You actually don't have to do half the stuff that Gillian and David do. They choose to do it because they care about the product, they care about the, the music, they care about the art that much. They just have taken so much uh, care and, and, and have been involved at every step of the way with this project. They've come in like three times already to run tests and it's clear that they're just really, really committed and involved in this which is a really nice thing to see. Yeah.